Shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm back with another video. Hopefully this is not too long. I wanted to actually reflect on um, Yeshua's death and resurrection. Um, since today is Passover, um, I just wanted to create something and just look at a couple of scriptures and just kind of dive a little deep into some of these things just to observe and analyze some things, okay? Um, so what we're going to really look at, you guys, is... Um, what happened um, during um, Yeshua's death and at his resurrection, okay? All right, you guys. So if you haven't looked at um, my video called Thoth in Ancient Pyramid of Egypt Review of Emerald Tablets, you may want to check it out because I connect Thoth and Yeshua um, it's possibly being the same person. Um, I will always say in all of my videos, if I am wrong, I am wrong, okay? Um, but I am reviewing um, everything to put all the pieces to the puzzle together. Um, the Most High, you know, have pretty much witnessed everything that I have been doing and I love a great mystery, so I like figuring things out. I like trying to solve a mystery, you, you know? Hopefully you like to do the same and not just listen to people. Hopefully you dive a little deeper into the scriptures to try to figure things out yourself because you have a mind and you need to use it, okay? Now, um, also I made a video um, called um, Portal Open um, to Heavenly Jerusalem. If you haven't checked that out, you can go ahead and check that out. It was just something that I saw um, that stood out to me um, one night and I was up really, really late. It had to be like around one or two, three o'clock in the morning. And I was like, let me just make a video, a quick video. Um, so yeah, you can check that out if you want to. Um, I actually show where a portal or the veil was open to heaven uh, when Yeshua died, okay? Now you guys, I want to make a point out. I've been trying to figure this out. I don't know if you guys have been trying to figure it out, but you know, on Matthew 27, 45, it says from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, hour darkness came over all the land what do you guys think what happened okay i never really hear a lot of people talking about this um it was very um interesting how basically the whole land was dark for three hours i think that's a sign of something and i think there's a hidden message in that as well but tell me what you guys think in the comments about this um <laughs> I have my own thoughts about this and I think it has something to do with Nibiru and I think it has something to do with the mothership as well because as we know a solar eclipse does not last that long for three hours okay it does not last that long okay so it had to be something else that had to stand in front of the sun um, to block out the light so it had to be something you guys so you need to put this stuff together try to figure it out okay we're gonna go to the next screen Okay, I'm just going to read the slides here, and I'm basically going to read um, pretty much what happened when he was pretty much on the cross. Um, so here we go. Matthew 27, 50 through 55 states, Then Jesus shouted out again, and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split apart, and tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection, went into the holy city of Jerusalem, and appeared to many people. The Roman officer and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They said, this man truly was the son of God. And many women who had came from Galilee with Jesus to care for him were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Now, key points that I want to make out at the time of death um, which was 3 p.m. Um, if you guys don't know the Hebrew time, that's actually the ninth hour, okay? So in the scripture, it will say the ninth hour, but that equals to 3 p.m. in the afternoon, okay? So Yeshua gave up his spirit, you guys, in the ninth hour, that was at 3 p.m., okay? 
with the sound of his voice, you guys, a portal opened. The loud shout symbolizes the trumpet being blown, you guys. I want you to understand this. When you're reading the Bible, everything is broken down in symbolism. There is more to see with your third eye. You just have to take the time to um, go through the scriptures, write it down, take notes, and see what is very obvious that, you know, there's a message that's trying to be sent to you so that you can understand what's going to happen at his second coming, okay? <laughs> So um, now the curtain tore from top to bottom, okay? The gateway or the portal was opened up, you guys, all right? Now this could even reference all chakras opening from the upper and lower chakras, okay? Remember, you guys, you have chakras in your systems, okay? You have upper and lower chakras. You got seven chakras, okay? I also wanted to make a point on the chakras as well. When you go into the book of Revelation, you see um, Yeshua was actually standing in the middle, okay? That's talking about the heart chakra. Y'all better figure this stuff out. Mm -hmm. All right, about the lamp stands and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I mean, not, we're not gonna get into that right now, okay? But the earth shook, there was an earthquake. All right, now when you think about this earth, Quake, you guys think about it in another way okay this symbolizes a vibration okay now the resurrection of the dead took place after his resurrection and they appeared to many in the holy city of jerusalem i believe this has a spiritual meaning you guys they entered the heavenly new jerusalem okay so what this is saying is that when the dead was resurrected. Yeshua was the gateway. He was the portal to heavenly new Jerusalem. This is talking about the spiritual realms, meaning the souls who had perished or who had died before him. You know, they were basically raised from the dead and they went into heaven. So he's just letting you know that there's an afterlife, letting you know that when you die, a portal does open up. OK, and then you get to go to a higher world which is this heavenly new jerusalem okay in the bible it does tell you what this new jerusalem is is this is where there's a multitude of angels okay now um i also wanted to point out to you guys that Thoth has the key to a mentee i've talked about this on several videos i'm not going to get into this again if you really want to know what's going on you have to um, go to my other um, videos to find out because I'm giving you piece by piece, little by little. Now, I don't want to continue to repeat myself several times. I know people are like, why she keep saying the same thing? <laughs> so um, if you want to check it out, like I said, you can go back and um, check out some things um, about Thoth um, and the Emerald Tablets and things like that about this key. I will, um, in future videos, I will get into the Emerald Tablets and I will try my best to go through each tablet and give you revelation on what's happening in these tablets. Okay. All right. We're going to go to the next screen. Okay. Now I'm going to read some scriptures in regards to the burial of Jesus. Okay. Matthew 27, 57 through 66. As evening approached, Joseph, a rich man from Arithmeta, who had become a follower of Jesus, went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate issued an order to release it to him. Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a long sheet of clean linen cloth. He placed it in his own new tomb, which had been carved out of the rock. Then he rolled a great stone across the entrance and left. Both Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting across from the tomb and watching. It's so interesting. The women were, they were always surrounded by him. They loved him. Have y'all noticed that the women, most people don't really talk about the women, but mm, the women were always around him and they loved him very much. All right. Now the guard at the tomb. The next day on the Sabbath, the leading priests and Pharisees went to see Pilate. They told him, sir, 
we remember what that deceiver once said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise from the dead. So we request that you seal the tomb until the third day. This will prevent his disciples from coming and stealing his body and then telling everyone he was raised from the dead. If that happens, we'll be worse off than we were at first. Pilate replied, take guards and secure it the best you can. So they sealed the tomb and posted guards to protect it. Okay, you guys, what I am going to do on the next four slides, I am going to dive a little deeper into um, the four Gospels, okay? We're going to be looking at all of the four Gospels just to see what was happening at the time of his resurrection, okay? Now, each of them state different things. I don't know if you guys noticed it, but I have... They all don't say the same exact thing. So we're going to go through all of the key points and all of the four Gospels. And I'm not going to read each of those chapters. I've already read them. If you want to pull up the chapters by yourself and, um, you know, just verify some of these things here that I'm just going to pinpoint, you can do that as well. So I, because uh, it will take all day to read all of those chapters and I just jotted down some key points. Okay, so now... What we're going to be looking at in Matthew 28, this is some things that I noticed, you guys. Let me see if y'all pick this stuff up as well. So early Sunday morning, okay, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to visit the tomb. An angel of the Lord appeared, okay? Now, this angel actually descended from heaven, okay? My thought was this when I was reading it. Well, could this be a chariot that descended from heaven? Okay. So also we see that the angel rolled away the stone and sat on it. His face was bright and clothing was white. Okay. So we already know that this being, okay, was wearing white clothing. Okay. His face was bright. Okay. So we got to understand this. This is always indicating like a higher being okay so we know that this is a higher being you guys now the guards were afraid of him so this was a physical manifestation you guys of the angel or the being that came out of the chariot this is what i noticed here first of all hmm why were they scared hmm why were the guards scared? Why were, they, well, why were the guards afraid of the angel, you guys? Was it the appearance of the angel? Was this angel possibly taller than the guards? Much more, you know, I don't know. I, I wasn't there, so I can't see why they was afraid. But every time in the Bible, you guys, when they would see angels coming out of the chariots, they would be afraid. So I'm thinking, like, why were they terrified? How did these beings look that came out of this chariot? Okay, now we're going to move on. The angel said, don't be afraid. <laughs> the angel's always saying, don't be afraid. Okay, now, <clears throat> this was the same thing that was said when the um, emissaries actually came to pick up the scribe of Enki and Enoch. I'm telling y'all, y'all have to go back and read or listen um, and watch my previous videos because I'm linking a lot of stuff, you guys. You have to go back. It's in order to understand all of my videos going forward, you have to go back in the past. You have to go back to the previous videos because I'm giving you clues so, so that you can see the bigger picture, okay? Now, he said he isn't there. He is risen. Now, how did Yeshua disappear, you guys, from the tomb? And it was sealed. Hmm? Did these angels have something to do with this mystery? Okay. Now, the angel took her to see where his body was laying. Okay. So it was like the angel was already present. Took Mary to go see where his body was previously laying. Are y'all following me here? 
I'm not going to get to it yet. So he told Mary to go ahead to tell his disciples and meet him in Galilee. Yahshua was already out of the tomb before they got there. How did he get out, y'all? How did he get out the tomb? Hmm? Did the angels open the tomb before they arrived and resurrected Yahshua? Or did Yahshua have the power to resurrect himself once he went to the halls of Amenti? Tell y'all, I'm putting piece by piece together. I'm figuring out the mystery, y'all. You got to understand the Emerald Tablets to understand all the stuff about resurrection, about the Great Pyramids, all of the ancient teachings, all of this stuff is all coming together. And then it includes these angels that's coming down on chariots, okay? These higher beings, okay? Now, the women were scared also. So remember now, we had the guards that were scared of the beings. Now the women were scared when they saw the angels as well. But they was happy because you know, Yeshua was resurrected. So they was like, oh my God, like he's, he, he's alive. Like he's back. You know what I'm saying? But why were they scared? You guys, why were they scared? Why is everybody scared of these angels? Should we be scared when the angels descend from heaven out of these chariots? Are we going to be afraid of how they look? I'm just saying, could it be, you know, I don't know y'all. So we're going to find out some things. So we're going to go to the next slide. All right, so now we're going to be into Luke 24, okay? I want to make a point on the um, for the last slide um, about are we going to be afraid when we actually see the beings that come out of the chariots? Now, I can only just say what I saw, okay, when I had the dream and the chariots descended and they came to me. The only thing that was different about them um, than us humans were that they were taller than us. They were, they were way taller than me. <laughs> So I don't know if that have anything to do with it. You know, they were, they were bigger and taller. Okay. Now they, in their face, they look just like us, look like humans. Okay. So I don't know if they were just scared of how tall these beings were. And maybe that could be it. You guys, I don't know. All right. So now, um, Luke 24, let's get straight into it. I'm just going to read this here. So very early Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they prepared. They found the stone, rolled away, and they went in and they didn't find his body. They were confused, but two men suddenly appeared to them with shining garments on. The women were terrified and bowed. Hmm? Once again, could these have been the angels or emissaries of Inky? Same thing happened with Inky Scribe. I just want to make the point. It's the same stuff that's happening, but it's just written in a different way. All right. So now they said, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He has risen. Did these angels have something to do with his resurrection? That's my question again, you guys. Here it shows they were already there before the women got there. Is this what the guards really saw? Hmm? Is this why the council wanted the guards to lie and say that the disciples stole the body? I'm just saying. Now, the women rushed back to tell the disciples because they were... Um, reminded of what Yeshua told them that he would um, be betrayed by um, sin for men, crucified, and he would rise again on the third day. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. So right here in this Luke, it just seemed like there was all the women. All the women were there to witness this. They was on the scene first before anybody else. Okay, before, of course, they came after the angels, but they were there. So it's like the women were there. Okay, so it's like, why was this being all revealed to the women? Hmm? So now that same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of um, Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. Hmm. But God kept them from recognizing him. Y'all, Yahshua was in another body. His appearance didn't look the same. 
okay? So something happened here, and this is the mystery that I'm trying to figure out. I don't know if anybody else trying to figure this thing out, but I like to dive a little deeper. I need to know what's going on, okay? Now, the angels were part of the plan of the resurrection. So my thing is this, y'all. How is it that Yeshua was walking, okay, with some of his followers, and they didn't even recognize him? Now, now come on now. Only three days after he had done died, now he looked different. Come on, how you how you gonna look different after three days? How you not gonna realize or or, or or notice someone else unless something changed with his actual physical form or his body? I'm just saying, y'all. I know a little bit more, but I'm not gonna give you guys my opinion because my opinion really don't matter. Okay, so now the men didn't believe okay what um the women had told them okay just like a typical hebrew man don't want to listen to the woman if you guys know they don't want to listen to what the woman say always think the woman's lying about something it's just crazy okay now as you can see the woman actually loved yeshua okay but peter jumped up and ran to the tomb he went to look um and he saw um the linen wrappings and wondered what had happened. So Peter too was like, hmm, he was questioning this thing too. He like, well, what happened? Like, you know, you gotta think about it. Like if somebody tell you, look, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna resurrect, I'm gonna be resurrected in three days. And then you go and you see that this actually occurred. And you're like, well, hold on, wait a minute. He was here, but he not here no more. What really happened? So it's like, what really happened inside of the tomb? Okay, what happened? Everybody just like, okay, yeah, Yeshua, he resurrected from the dead. Okay, hallelujah, woo, praise God, this and this. But ain't nobody questioning this and saying, well, how was this possible? How did this happen? Like, y'all, what happened? Okay, I want to know. I've been trying to figure this thing out for years, okay? And that's why I've been led to a lot of different things. I just want to know what happened, okay? It got to be something. Something happened, y'all. <laughs> Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so now we're going to get into Mark 16. Some of the key points here. Saturday evening when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. When they got there, the stone was already rolled away. They entered a tomb and saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting there on the right side. The woman was shocked. The angel said, don't be alarmed. <laughs> he isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you before he died. The women fled from the tomb, trembling and bewildered. And they said nothing to anyone because they were too frightened. Hmm, why were they scared? After Jesus rose from the dead early on Sunday morning, the first person who saw him was Mary Magdalene, the woman from whom he had cast out seven demons. Child, they ain't got nothing. They got to do with healing the seven chakras, okay? But anyway, she went to the disciples who were grieving and weeping and told them what had happened. But when she told them that Jesus was alive and she had seen him, they didn't believe her. See what I'm saying? They didn't believe her, y'all. They don't want to believe the woman. They don't believe me either, y'all, when I be telling them this stuff. But anyway, afterward, he appeared in a different form to two of his followers who were walking from Jerusalem into the country. They rushed back to tell the others, but no one believed them. Still later, he appeared to the 11 disciples as they were eating together. He rebuked them for their stubborn unbelief because they refused to believe who had seen him after he had, raped, um, had been raised from the dead. When the Lord Jesus had finished talking with them, he was taken up into heaven and sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. And the disciples went everywhere and preached. And the Lord worked through them, confirming 
what they said by many miraculous signs. Now it never mentioned, okay, how he was taken up into heaven. Remember the chariot, y'all, descended and the angels, okay, had already landed and they were on site at the tomb and the tomb was rolled away. Now, y'all, his ride had done came, y'all. Listen, <laughs> I know y'all might think I'm crazy. Y'all, okay, if he's saying when the Lord Jesus had finished talking with them, he was taken up into heaven. How he was taken up into heaven, y'all? Hmm? We already had the angels on site in a chariot. This is what I believe. So you had to be taken up in the sky. Well, where did you go in the sky? What was up in the sky, y'all? Could it have been that mothership or a bigger chariot that blocked out the sun? Remember when he was on the cross? Something had to be up there in the sky. I'm just saying, I'm just putting all this stuff together. You got a bigger ship that sends out smaller ships and they could have been on a smaller ship and that smaller ship could have came down, descended on the earth, did what they had to do with Yeshua and resurrected him, brought him up in the chariot, went to the big mothership to go speak with, hmm, I'm not going to say nothing else. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to put this stuff together, y'all. Look. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out a mystery. I like stuff like this. This is fun. I like it. Okay, so we're going to go to the next screen. Okay, now I'm going to get into John 20, okay? Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciples started out, out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciples outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped, I'm sorry, he stopped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon and Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for until then they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Now, they were trying to figure out how he was resurrected okay i think these beings or angels did the same thing that yahshua did when he resurrected lazarus from the dead he was trying to show y'all something about his own resurrection when he resurrected lazarus i'm just trying to say y'all i'm just it got to be something it's something y'all okay so mary was standing outside the tomb crying and as she wept she, um she stopped and looked in she saw two white robe angels. Now we got two. Remember in the other one, it was just one, but now we got two. I'm just saying. One sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been laying. Y'all, do y'all not see this? So these two angels, okay, clothed in white, was inside of the tomb. One was positioned at the top of his head and one was um, positioned at the foot of his head where his body was laying at. So they were showing you how they, y'all, <laughs> I'm telling y'all, they had something to do with his resurrection. They was in there. I'm telling y'all, they had something to do with it. This is why this and John was showing you where the angels was positioned at um, from his body and how they did what they did. I'm just saying they did something, y'all. They're not going to show you everything. They're only going to give you clues, okay? Now, um, now it says, dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. Y'all, <laughs> it was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Here we go again, y'all. Now, Mary did not recognize him again. Now, y'all, like I said before, 
was he in another body or something? What changed about his appearance? But this was Jesus, right? The same Jesus that they had just saw previously three days ago. And now they couldn't recognize him because his body was different. He looked different. His face was different, y'all. He did not look the same. His appearance was different, y'all. I'm trying to, y'all, some, something going on, okay? So it says, dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her, who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go and get him. So she talking to this gardener like, mm, who you is? Like, you know, where they, I need to know where they put Jesus at now, where he at? Now, she didn't even know that that was him. <laughs> Y'all, this is getting crazy, okay? Now, um, so here, you guys, we have, we got Mary on the scene. And the two angels were there sitting at the top and the foot. Okay, at the place where his body was laying, clearly that is showing you the two angels did something to Yeshua's body in the tomb. Now the chariot descended and rolled away the stone and Yeshua's appearance was different. I'm just putting out key points. He was in a new body because they all couldn't recognize him after he resurrected from the dead. What did the angels do and how was he in a new body? Mary's Jesus said, she turned to him and cried out, Rabani, which is Hebrew for teacher, don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the father, but go find my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. Y'all. Y'all need to put some comments. Y'all need to let me know what y'all think about this. Because ain't nobody really talking about this. Nobody, even nobody have not talked about this in detail. What is really going on in these scriptures, y'all? What, what, what's, what's being seen? What's been shown to us? Something that we missed? Something that we didn't pay attention to? Hmm? He did not look the same, y'all. He was in a new body. Hmm? I'm just saying, and even when you think about the rapture and stuff like that, how the teachings of the rapture, how you're going to be caught up and you're going to be caught up and you're going to have a new body. So he was like showing you how you was going to have a new body. Well, what? Listen, I'm going off topic real quick. Now, if you go to the book of Revelation, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to do this by memory. So if I mess up, I mess up. OK, because I'm trying to remember everything that I read now, in the book of Revelations, it does talk about, like, basically when Yeshua comes back, that he will be, he will bring um, our rewards with him. Okay? And I always thought that he was bringing our new bodies that were stored in heaven, you guys. And the only reason why I say this is because I've read the ascension of Isaiah, Okay, and if you haven't read the Ascension of Isaiah, go and read the Ascension of Isaiah, where um, Isaiah actually goes and travels through um, the levels of heaven. So he went to the seventh heaven where his body was stored up at on the seventh heaven, and he went up to the seventh heaven, and um, he saw Yeshua there, and then he went on the journey with Yeshua back down to the earth when he was born. So he was going through the different um, heavens. And um, each heaven that he descended through, the appearance of the angels that was on the left and the right were all different, okay? So if you haven't read The Ascension of Isaiah, you need to read it. I think that was awesome, um, a revelation about the seven heavens and things like that. It's just showing you each heaven, um, your body is different. Your appearance is different in each heaven. So in each dimension, you have a different form, okay? So you have different bodies that are stored um, in heaven. So if you, let's just say, I'm just making something up right now. So if let's just say right now that we're born on the earth and we have this physical body, this avatar body that we are currently, um, in, and let's just say you incarnated on another planet, such as let's just say Nibiru and you incarnated on Nibiru when Nibiru has a different type of body. Okay. Nibiru has a different form, a different body. So if you're on Nibiru and you're born in a Nibirian body, that's a different type of body than the body that's on the earth. 
So I hope you guys can follow along with what I'm saying. So he was, it's like the scriptures are trying to tell you that the bodies are different so that a new body, like you can go and, and, and incarnate on another planet and have a new body. You guys, that's all this is. This is what I think this has been revealed, but I think there's something more to it because a lot of stuff has been revealed to me about a, a chamber and I've been trying to figure this out, y'all. I'm trying to think of the possibilities of this because I wish I can find it, but there was something that I was watching and it was basically a testimony from this young lady. I don't know if she was young, but whatever. It was this lady, let me just say that, this lady, right? She had died, you guys, and she, her consciousness actually traveled to... I think it was like a mothership or another world. So after she left her physical body on the earth, her consciousness traveled to another um, world, or I believe it was a mothership. And she saw herself, y'all, in another form, in another body, in this type of chamber or something. And she was asleep, okay? And she saw it, and she knew that that was her in another world y'all this is deep people been having a lot of experiences where they have like um near-death experience and she was able to go to that other world or that mothership and when she went there she saw other chambers there where everybody that was lying or they were standing up actually in these chambers and they were sleep so from those chambers Wherever they was up, wherever they were at, at a different time and space, they were able to send their consciousness to the earth to be born in an avatar body. And when they die, they would be able to send their consciousness back to their other bodies that was stored up on another planet or in the mothership. I'm sorry, I had to give y'all that information because it just came out. So I, I don't know if I said it the right way, but I hope y'all can understand what I was just saying. So this is what I'm talking about, about chambers. Okay. Um, um, if you guys have seen the movie Avatar, it gives you an example of that. Y'all saw how he was in like this little chamber. That's the perfect example. This is the perfect example. He was in that little chamber thing, y'all on Avatar. Go back and look at it. He was in the chamber. He was on another world, okay? And then when he went and, of course, like, went to sleep, his consciousness was sent to a new body. It was sent to a new Avatar body, you guys, and his consciousness was connected to the Avatar body, and then he was able to exist in that other world where those other Avatars were at, and then he was in a new body, and he was able to run. Remember, y'all? He was able to run before he was in a, um, a wheelchair and he wasn't able to walk. But when his consciousness was transferred over into a new avatar body, he was able to run again. And he was all happy. He was free because he was like, oh, my God, like I got a new body. I'm just saying this is this is the same thing that's happening here, y'all. I know a lot of people might be afraid of this. <laughs> this is. This is for real, y'all. I don't know. <laughs> this is for real. I know a lot of people may not want to accept this as facts, but you have to understand that um, there have been many higher beings who have evolved with technology, and they even have this technology on Earth today, okay? If you have, um, if you go on Gaia, Cosmic Disclosure talks a lot about it. They have this, this technology and there's clones, you guys, that is walking around on the earth. Clones. Okay? This is some, this is some real stuff and many people need to wake up because they, they're not aware of this, but this happens for real. But it shows you with the testimony of that lady who had a near-death experience, she actually was dying and her soul came out of her body and she went to another time and space where her other body was at. And she saw herself 
And she was like, well, what happens if I, um, basically what happens if I reconnect to this other avatar body? Am I going to die on the earth? But she wasn't ready to go yet, but she came back on the earth and she, she's still alive today. So I'm just saying, it's telling you some people right now might be on the ship. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just being honest with y'all. Some people might be on the ship right now. I've heard other people talk about how they was caught up and they was on the ship and stuff. I'm just saying your bodies might be actually laying on the ship. That moving matrix is telling you some hidden stuff for real. You got to wake up. You got to wake up. All right. So now we're going to move on. All right. So on this slide, um, I'm actually going to be reading something from um, historic letter written by Pontius Pilate to Tiberius Caesar. This is something I actually came upon you guys as I was trying to figure out what else happened during Yeshua's resurrection. And I actually came upon this. So this is interesting. A lot of people may not have even heard about this, um, but I'm going to go over it now with you guys and just read some of this um, of what I found. OK, so when the great excitement arose <clears throat> about the sepulcher being empty, I felt a deeper um, solicitude than ever. I sent for Malchus, who told me he had placed his lieutenant, Ben Isham, with 100 soldiers around the sepulcher. He told me that Isham and the soldiers were very much alarmed at what had happened there that morning, I sent for this man, Isham, who related to me as near as I can recollect the following circumstances. He said that at about the beginning of the fourth watch, I want to let you guys know, um, you see this image over here about the Roman night watches here. Um, the fourth watch actually occurred at 3 a.m. You see that there, fourth watch in the morning. This is 3 a.m. in the morning that this happened, okay? Um, he saw a soft and beautiful light over the sepulcher. He at first thought the women had come to embalm the body of Jesus as was their custom, but he could not see how they had gotten through the guards. While these thoughts were passing through his mind, behold, the whole place was lighted up, and there seemed to be crowds of the dead in their grave clothes. All seemed to be shouting and filled with ecstasy, while all around and above was the most beautiful music he had ever heard. And the whole air seemed to be full of voices praising God. This seemed like he was having like a vision, you guys, like a spiritual vision where he saw people actually in the spiritual realm. Like, remember how I told y'all the portal had opened up and people would be going into New Jerusalem? It's like he had a vision of seeing um, the dead that was being resurrected. He saw the portal opening and them entering into the new Jerusalem and they were all happy, um, singing and dancing and things like that. So that's a spiritual vision that he was seeing, you guys, all right? At this time, there seemed to be a reeling and swimming of the earth so that he turned so sick and faint that he could not stand on his feet. So he was dizzy, okay? He had got dizzy, you guys. He said the earth seemed to swim from under him and his senses left him so that he knew not what did occur. So it seemed like he had got dizzy and he fainted, you guys. And I believe this is where the vision came from. OK, I asked him if he could not have been mistaken as to the light. Was it not day that was coming in the east? He said at first he thought of that, but at a stone's cast, it was exceedingly dark. And then he remembered it was too early for day. I asked him if his dizziness might not have come from being awakened and getting up too suddenly as it sometimes had the effect. He said he was not and had not been asleep all night as the penalty was death for him to sleep on duty. He said he had let some of the soldiers sleep 
at a time. Some were asleep then. I asked him how long the scene lasted. He said he did not know, but he thought it was nearly an hour. He said it was hid by the light of the day. I asked him if he went to the sepulcher after he had come to himself. He said no, because he was afraid that just as soon as relief came, they all went to their quarters. I asked him if he had been questioned by the priest. He said he had. They wanted him to say it was an earthquake and that they were asleep and offered him money to say that the disciples came and stole Jesus, but we saw no disciples. He did not know that the body was gone until he was told. I asked him what was the private opinion of those priests he had conversed with. He said that some of them thought that Jesus was no man, that he was not a human being, that he was not the son of Mary, that he was not the same that was said to be born of the virgin in Bethlehem, that the same person had been on earth before before with Abraham and Lot and at many times and places. Okay, so just to um, go over some key points with this, you guys. Now, there was a 100 soldiers placed around the tomb. At the beginning of the fourth watch, which is 3 a.m., is when one of the soldiers saw a soft and beautiful light over the tomb. It's possible that he saw a portal or a gateway opening over the tomb, you guys. This is a spiritual, you got to keep in mind, this was a vision, okay? He had a vision, third eye, okay? He had a vision, he saw a actual light, a portal that was actually opening up on the earth, okay? Um, and remember, like I told you guys, now, 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 let me put this point out. You see that the time was 3 a.m. Remember at 3 p.m., Yeshua made a loud shout, and I told you that the portal opened up. And remember in the scriptures it said that the dead was resurrected. Hmm? Y'all remember that? And they said that they was after um, Yeshua's resurrection. Remember that? when he? This is telling you about the 3 a.m., this is like on the opposite side, okay? It's telling you what was happening um, when Yeshua um, died and he opened up the portal. And that portal was that light where all the souls of the dead resurrected. And you see it here in this vision here from this soldier that saw what happened um, during the time of Yeshua being resurrected. Okay, it's showing you everything right here. I'm just putting it together for you guys so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, now while he was thinking, suddenly the whole place was lit up and he said there seems to be crowds of the dead in their grave clothes. They were all excited and filled with joy all around and above. He heard music. The whole air or the sky was filled with of voices praising God seem as though he got dizzy and fainted from the vision you guys I think he was dizzy and fainted and then he had the vision and this is what he saw in his vision you guys um, the most high allowed him to have this vision to bring this forward as a testimony so that we will be able to see what was really going on behind the scenes behind in the spiritual realms you guys this is this is all the revelation you need to see what's happening behind the scenes um, when these souls went into New Jerusalem, they were happy. And as you can see, um, the whole sky was filled with the voices. So it was trying to tell you above in the sky. It was trying to say in heaven. This is what he was seeing that was happening in heaven, in the spiritual realms, okay, with the dead who had rose from the dead. Now, let's move on. So it says, it suddenly became light early in the morning, but the sun had not rise. So, once again, he was having a vision. He felt like the vision lasted an hour, but he don't know, which implies he could have simply had a vision. You know how you go to sleep and you have a vision and, you know, it's like it seemed like it lasted for however long. But then you wake up and it's like, hold on. Well, how long was that? You know what I'm saying? Like, hmm. All right. So 
Now it says he had spoken to the priests and they wanted him to lie and say it was an earthquake and that they were asleep and offered him money to say that the disciples came and stole Jesus. See, here we go again with these priests here want to lie and stuff. See what I'm saying? They want to lie. They wanted him to lie about everything that he was experiencing. Don't lie. If you had a vision of this, you had a vision of this. Don't allow people to make you lie about what you actually saw and experienced. Okay. And once again, they want to offer him money. They always want to shut you up and give you money. Be like, okay, don't say nothing. I'm going to give you money. Same thing going on in this world. Nah, you want to give somebody money to keep everything on hush. Don't say nothing. Mm -mm. Anyway, so now we have here, so it says no disciples were at the scene and the soldier didn't even know that the body of Yeshua disappeared until he was told. See, the soldier didn't even know that Yeshua's body was gone, y'all. So he didn't even realize that Yeshua had basically had already resurrected. I believe this is when the angels descended. At the same time that the soldier pretty much got dizzy and fell out, I think this was the same time when the, the, the chariot descended over the tomb. Okay? Y'all got to find y'all got to follow me here. The same time when the soldier got dizzy. Okay? And he fell. He went to a vision and he saw a bright light. That bright light, I think, is indicating in the physical is when that chariot actually descended over the tomb. And that's when the two angels came out and they resurrected Yahshua. Because at the same time he was having the vision of the dead being resurrected was the same exact time of when Yahshua was being resurrected by these two angels that came down and descended in a ship. Okay? Now, also, the priest thought jesus was not human which implies well he was an extraterrestrial okay which means he was not from this earth they said he was not the same person but that the same person had been on earth before with abraham and lot and at many times and places what does that mean you guys that means that yeshua was on earth in the beginning this is what they're telling you they're saying that Hold on, wait a minute, like, yo, he was already here before, okay? And guess what? Yeshua said himself in John 8, 23, but he continued, you are from below, I am from above, you are of this world, I am not of this world. Hmm? John 18, 36 says, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. Y'all, he's telling you he came from another world and he is not from the earth. What does that mean? He is an extraterrestrial being. He's from another planet, y'all. I don't understand why, why people can't understand this information. He told y'all himself, all the people who believe in Yeshua and believe in his word, believe in the teachings, y'all don't even know this about your own savior. You don't even know nothing about him, but you claim that you know him, but you really don't. You don't even know that he came from another world and his kingdom is not of this world. He came from another kingdom, which was from above. He's telling you, it's not from the earth. His kingdom is on another planet, y'all. That's in the heavens. That's what he's telling you, okay? And spiritually, he's trying to tell you that he comes from the spiritual realms. He comes from a higher dimensional world. He comes from the upper heavens. He comes from higher regions in space, y'all. He's trying to tell you multiple things. Just by these little things that he told you, he's telling you so much, okay? Now... He also said his servants wouldn't let him get arrested. Hmm. What does that mean, y'all? Hmm? Think about what I told y'all. What does that mean? If somebody was above watching him during the time he was um, on the cross and he could have sent the angels, thousands of angels to him, somebody was watching him. Somebody was there in the cloud. Somebody was in the sky during this time, y'all. All right? So we already learned in previous video about Inky's servants being the angels. Okay? Y'all need, need to put two and two together. 
what Yahshua was trying to tell y'all in the scriptures. He all this stuff that's in the Bible was written in a secret code, in a secret language. It's not going to be um, something that everybody understands. Okay, that's why you have to dive a little deeper into the scriptures. You can't just read it and just move on. You have to meditate on the word. You have to continuously read it over and over and over again because every time you go back and read it you're going to find something new you're going to find something different and you're going to get a new revelation okay you know how many times i've read the bible and every time i go back i see something different and i see something new okay god is revealing different things to me at certain times and it ba it's based on my level of consciousness so the further i get up in consciousness the more i'm gonna see it i'm gonna see more and more things okay now I just want you to know that, you know, in previous videos, when I was telling you about NK servants or the angels, all of these angels, y'all, they all came from the Biru. Okay. So I'm just telling you, all right, the, these beings, all of, all the Nibirians, they all thought they were servants of the most high. They all thought they were servants of the creator of all. They believed in the creator of all, and they felt like they were servants to God. They felt like they was here to serve humanity. They was here to teach us, to guide us, you know. They the ones that actually um built civilizations back in ancient times, okay? Y'all got to understand this on a higher level, okay? Now, you know, so this has to you have to dig deeper and say, "Well, okay, well what was Yeshua talking about then? What was he talking about with his servants?" What was he talking about his service would fight to prevent my arrest? What, what was he telling us, you guys? I'm curious into what beings he was referring to, okay? You see, we already see his servants on the earth. They was, they, they were scared. They was nowhere to be found. They were scared because they was like, well, they about to kill him. So we need to hide. We need to we don't need to be around because we don't want them to get us too and they're going to kill us too so they was in high end who was he really talking about they weren't fighting for yeshua did they fight for yeshua nope they was hiding they were like nah man i don't want to die he about to die i don't want to die right now they were scared all right now nah, let's move on okay brothers and sisters i am done with this lesson for today i just have a um scripture here Matthew 26 53 don't you realize that I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us and he would send them instantly like I said who was these servants huh who was these angels you guys that he could have sent for who were these angels and this is what you have to ask yourself who was Yeshua talking about when he was talking about thousands of angels? In the Bible, y'all, go back. Go back and see who has thousands upon thousands of chariots and thousands upon of thousands of angels. It's the most highest chariots. You go back, y'all, in the Old Testament. It will tell you who he is talking about. When he talks about my father, y'all better figure it out. I already said before, if it's a possibility, and I could be wrong, if it's a possibility that Inky is being shown as like, you know, the father, then the son was Thoth, okay? And I already told you guys that Thoth and Yeshua is very similar. Um, the teachings are very similar to each other when you go back and you compare it in the Emerald Tablets sound like the same stuff that Yeshua was saying in the emerald tablets so if this is what Yeshua was trying to tell y'all he was leading you back to the beginning so if he's leading you back to the beginning that means you need to in order for you to understand the end you have to go back to the beginning you cannot figure out everything that's going to happen in the end if you don't know what really happened in the beginning you guys all right and guess what if you hang around with me i'm taking you back to the beginning of time i'm taking you back to the beginning on what happened so that you can see the bigger picture so that you can understand the end thank you for listening and thank you for watching